as we go through this. Now, first, as you can see, we'll have to look at the basics of a simple sentence. And this is what simple sentences are. Um, basically, a subject and predicate. However, other ones, uh, you go into a bit more detail and you'll say a subject, a verb, and an object. Now, regarding the object, not all sentences contain an object. These, uh, the ones that do not, just for interest's sake, they are referred to as intransitive sentences. However, rather than give you cluttering definitions, let's rather take a look at a few simple sentences which don't have objects. And there you can see why I've put that picture there. It was a very happy day for me on Saturday. I'm still rejoicing about it. And there we are. The um, subject is I, and of course the verb, am rejoicing. Then you've got you rock. That's something that is a very good thing to say to a person. It's very flattering. <laughs> and they will also be rejoicing if you do that. And I've included one last one. This is the, the shortest scripture in the Bible. Um, it's found in John chapter 11. And you see that only two words, Jesus wept, but it's a, a very powerful statement. No object with either one of those three sentences. Now, let's take a look at other simple sentences. This time, there will be an object included. Okay. And there we've got just a three word sentence. I drink wine. You see the subject is in red. Um, the verb is in green. And of course, the object is in blue. Good. Let's try another one. Oh, that's why I put this picture there, uh, just in case uh, nobody has uh, uh, thought what uh, uh, drinking wine looks like. Good. We go on. For interest's sake, this is in the first person and present tense. First person means it's I, me, we, us. Present tense is, of course, it's happening now. Right, a second sentence. You will attend university. Okay, and I really hope that all of you listening today will attend university. Um, the... This you'll see is in the second person, you, second person. Okay, will attend is in the future. Then we've got a third simple sentence here. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Now, some of you will know it. I've taken that line from a nursery rhyme. Okay, and that one, of course, is in the third person. Um, he, she, it, them, they, uh, him, her, all of those are third person pronouns. And of course, went up the hill. They've done it already. So it's in the past tense. Now what we're going to do is look at phrases. We'll build on what we have already. Oh, for those of you that uh, haven't yet uh, uh, made up their minds to go to university, I've included a wonderful picture of what you look like after you graduate. There we go. Good. Now, a phrase is a group of words used in place of a single word in a sentence. A phrase can always be replaced by a single word. Now, the definition of a phrase is that it does not contain a subject and a verb. It can have one or the other, but not both. All right. Please remember that because that's going to distinguish it from a clause. Now, what we do is we'll take our simple sentences and I've added phrases to them. And there you can see that sentence with which we began. I drink wine for its health benefits. Now, you'll see that the phrase is highlighted in uh, yellow. And you will see that it has no verb in it whatsoever. Right, so you can see there clearly is a phrase. We go on to our second example sentence, and there you will see that 
I've added after finishing matric. Okay, you will attend university after finishing matric. There is a verb in there, but there's no subject. Okay, and the verb itself is a is not a, um, a finite verb. But we'll we won't look at that too deeply now. These are, not, are complex issues. We have here then Jack and Jill again, and this time we've got the first two lines of the poem. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. <laughs> Again, um, there is a verb here. Fetch is a verb, but um, there's no subject. So again, we say that that's um, a phrase that has been added. Now, take a look here. I've put the same sentence there and I've replaced the phrase with just a single word. It doesn't have the same meaning, but it is still a perfectly valid sentence. Right, I've done the same here with you will attend university and you see I've just changed that to the single word soon. It, it Again, it makes perfect sense. And here you have Jack and Jill went up the hill together. <laughs> again, a different meaning, but still the phrase being replaced by a single word. Finally, we're going to look at clauses. And here is your definition of a clause. Clause is part of a sentence, okay? And it's got both a subject and a finite verb in it, right? Um, let's go to our uh, sentences again. And now you can see it's got, I drink wine because there is now a, a conjunction that has been added there. And you'll see it lowers my cholesterol levels. And you've got there's your subject and there is your verb and, of course, an object. Um, it's interesting to note that that has now become a clause as well, because that is a clause as well. Both of them contain a subject and a verb. Now we'll go on to our second one. And it says there, you will attend university, and again, your conjunction added there, after you have finished matric. Okay, so again, there is your uh, subject, and there is in green is the verb. Good. And finally, we've got here, Jack and Jill went up the hill, and I've completely ruined the poem now, where they fetched a pail of water and we've got now our subject and the verb added to make a full clause now i'm not going to go into any more detail now i think we'll stop at this point and i am going to ask you to try this task it's uh 10 multiple choice questions and uh I'll be interested to see how you all do on it, because I remember after the last task that I posted, uh, the vast majority of you did very well. So there we are. Please give it a go. And I shall go silent for a while. <laughs>